Hello moms, this is Holly McLean, the Mommy Answer Lady, and today we're going to talk about the second aspect of an effective parental mindset, sacrifice, doing what's best for your child no matter what. And you might be a little bit surprised, there are a lot of things you don't have to give up. You can still be a really good mom. Well, moms, when I looked up the definition of sacrifice, I found a lot of definitions that had to do with sacrificing animals or other things like that for religious purposes. And that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about giving up something for the betterment of something else. So the things that we're going to be talking about today are the sacrifices that we might need to make as moms to be the most effective parent we can be. Now, I just want you to think about this. Your children are only going to be with you for a few years out of your life. Your life expectancy is somewhere around 80, right? At least those in the United States, um, it's about 80-ish years old. And how much of of that time are your children actually going to be with you? 20 years, maybe? Hopefully, they aren't going to stay with you longer than they should. (laughs) Hopefully, they're going to be with you at least about that long. Uh, So maybe 20 of those years were also you growing up, right? And then you've got about 20 years for a child to be growing. If you have a couple of children and close together, maybe 25 years, something like that. And as they grow, you actually kind of sacrifice less and less of your personal time Uh, as they get older, because they're able to take care of themselves, right? If they go to school or whatever, then they're not even with you part of the day. So think about the sacrifices that you're giving as very temporary in your life, in your adult life. So you took about 20-ish years to grow up yourself, and then children are going to be 20 to 25 years. So that's 40 to 45 years of your time that is either you being a child or you taking time to raise one. The rest of your entire life, which is another 30 to 40 years, is going to be without little children around or any kind of children around other than grandchildren. But you're going to have an awful lot of time where you're not going to have to do the sacrifices that we're talking about here today. So believe me, you're going to be really happy with the outcome later in your life if you do the sacrifices that you need to do now to be the most effective parent you can be. There aren't many people that after their children are grown, wish that they had worked more, wish that they had made more money. Instead, they wish they had spent more time and effort raising their children. And believe me, it is going to be so much more enjoyable and fulfilling when you get older if you took that time to sacrifice when they were young. So we'll just go back for a moment to that definition of maturity. Understanding how your current words and actions will affect your distant future and acting on that knowledge in a responsible way. So we're talking about that in your personal life right now. Are you willing to sacrifice those things you need to sacrifice now so that in the distant future, your children will grow up to be the kind of people that you want them to be, that they will be happy, well-adjusted, and able to support themselves. Now, also, I said we were going to talk about some things you need to sacrifice and some things you don't need to sacrifice in order to be a good mom. One of the things that you do need to sacrifice is time, and all of you know that as moms. You sacrifice lots of time giving it to your children, And obviously that's important and it's a priority, but you do not need to sacrifice all of your free time. In fact, it isn't the best thing for your child for you not to have any free time to yourself. So the way to sacrifice in the most effective way is to just put the priority of your time on your children, but be sure that you leave time for yourself. The practical way to do that is to make sure that you schedule out your day so that you spend time with your children each day. Eye-to-eye contact, which we will talk about some more in future podcasts. 
but also that you make sure you schedule time for yourself every single day. Now, you might think, well, that's not much of a sacrifice to schedule time for myself. Well, if you're a busy mom, sometimes it is. Sometimes you're thinking, oh, I need to get those dishes done. I really want to get those dishes done. This is important to me. I want to get that done. I absolutely believe you need to get your dishes done. Believe me. I am not saying put aside your housework or any of that kind of thing. But I am saying that it's really important that you give some time to yourself every single day. And definitely time to your children every single day. And part of that is just going to be disciplining yourself, which in, in itself, discipline sometimes is just plain sacrifice, isn't it? It's doing something you don't want to do. That's what I consider discipline to be. Something you don't want to do. We have some other definitions for, de- for discipline later in some of these podcasts, but that's part of discipline is doing something you don't want to do. And so some of your sacrifice is just going to be scheduling your time out. Another sacrifice is going to be money. Now, this is something that's very difficult for me to say. I sometimes are going to be saying things that you don't want to hear. And this is one of those moments that some of you won't like what I'm saying. It's important that you do everything you possibly can to stay at home with your children as they're growing up. Now, if you think about it, like I was just saying before, Out of all the time that you have in your life, I am talking about the first five to six years before they attend school, if you are planning on them going to school and not homeschooling, that you stay at home with them. Now, I know there are certain circumstances where that's not possible. If there is a single mom and she doesn't have any other way to make income and she does have to work, I completely understand there are some circumstances like that. But I want to say, if there is any way that you can arrange your life where you can stay home, you should do it. And if that means sacrificing money, which it usually will, if that means sacrificing what kind of home you live in, what kind of car you drive, you need to do that. That is one of those sacrifices that you need to make as a mom. And remember, it's only for a few years And you will be so glad you did. When you see the relationship and the rewards of having stayed home and really going through, I hope that you are able to go through all of the podcasts and uh, the training sessions that I'm going to be giving uh, because you can enjoy those years. You can really enjoy those years and not be struggling the whole time and instead just enjoying those years. You will be so glad you did later. Believe me, you will. So no matter what, that would be the very best that you can possibly do is stay home with your children if there's any possible way you can do it. Even if you have to sacrifice um, some of the conveniences or luxuries that maybe that you have had in your life previously. Um, If you can't do that, do everything you can to reduce your hours as much as possible so that you can spend more time caring for your children. So that's one of the sacrifices that's difficult for some of us to do. I understand. But if you want to do what's best, do everything you can to make that happen. Another part of the sacrifices that you might need to make is friends and relationships. First, I'll talk about friends. We need to be really careful about the friends that we choose and uh, especially the examples that they're going to be to our, our children. We are also going to talk about that in some future podcasts. So um, just think about that. I don't think I have to go into a whole lot of detail. One of the details that I did want to get into is other kinds of relationships. So if you are a single mom, I just want to make you think about this for a little bit. Whenever you start a relationship with a man, that is going to take a lot of your time and effort and energy and focus away from your child. Your child needs to know they are where your focus is. They are where your priority is, not in a relationship with a man. They, they don't need to feel threatened about that. They don't need to worry about that. Those are adult situations that they start to worry about when you get into a relationship with a, a man. 
So this is another one of those hard things I'm saying. Don't get involved with a man when your child is small. Don't. If you are not married for whatever reason, keep yourself single at least until your children are grown. And I know that is like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to turn this podcast off. I don't want to hear that. My job as the mommy answer lady is to tell you what's best. If you don't listen to it, that's up to you. If you don't agree with it, that's okay. But I'm telling you what I believe is best. And this is what I believe is best. Put your focus on your children while your children are growing. Do not move your focus into a relationship with someone else. There's all kinds of problems that come from that. Too numerous to mention on this podcast right now. But I'm saying that's what is best. And that's my job is to say what's best. So can you sacrifice that for that amount of time in your life? If you want to get into a relationship later, that can happen later. You don't have to do that now. Instead, put your focus and your energy in on your children as they're growing. Now, I'm not talking about sacrificing a relationship with the dad of the child. Hopefully, you are able to be in a situation where what's best, of course, is if you and the dad are married and you have a family intact and that's the very best. And of course, sometimes that isn't the situation. But let's say it is. Let's say it is that you are married to the, the child's father. Then you want to put your priorities in order in that you and your husband together make your child the priority. Not that you put your husband aside and that your child is the priority. Because when you do that, what you are doing is you are hurting the child. Because remember, that man is important to that child very important. And if that man is cared for and loved like he should be by his wife, that is going to be what's best for your child. So depending on the relationships we're talking about, sometimes you're going to have to sacrifice by giving up a relationship and other times you're going to have to build up that relationship. So if the child's dad is your husband, of course, you need to really build up that relationship. That's what's best for your child. Now, sometimes that might seem like a sacrifice if you're not very happy at the moment. Hopefully you are. And that isn't a sacrifice at all. That's exactly where you want to be. But let's say that you're not married to the the dad of the child. You still need to build that relationship with that man, not necessarily in a romantic way, depending on what the situation is. But that man is important to your child and always will be. So you need to look at that man in that way. He's important to your child. He is your child's father. You need to do whatever you can to try to build your relationship with him and your child's relationship with him. And again, of course, there are circumstances where that's not true. Maybe if he was a drug drug addict, if he's in prison, if he is uh, in some way a destructive person in that kind of a way, then of course that would be different. I'm talking about normal circumstances where this is a person who is a normal man who would be a good father if he has the opportunity. So give him the opportunity because that's what's best for your child. And sometimes that's a sacrifice you have to make. Hopefully it's not. Hopefully you have a happy, intact family, but I know that's not everybody that I'm talking to right now. So we'll move on to something that's not quite so controversial, and we're going to talk a little bit about screen time. I want you to think about where your focus is. When you have that computer in front of you, that iPhone in front of you, that iPad, I'm, of course, I'm talking Apple products, but it doesn't matter, whatever, whatever kind of phone or device you have. Where is your focus when that's in front of you? There's nothing wrong with having screen time for yourself. That's absolutely fine, as long as it's within your free time. But what I want to suggest is you sacrifice by putting your child as a priority whenever they're in the room. Whenever they're with you, They are your priority. The screen time is not. Now, one of the things that I always did when my children were around and they were young is if they, and even the ones that I have now at home, I have a couple teenagers at home. 
When they walk in the room, if I'm watching television, for instance, I turn the TV off, pause it, do whatever, and give them my attention. I remember my daughter came over one time, my adult daughter, and she was, uh, we were watching a movie together, whatever. And she recognized how many times I did that because whenever my children came in the room, I paused the TV. And she was like, oh my goodness, we have to watch the movie in little tiny pieces. Yes, that's part of sacrificing as a mom. You stop what you're doing and you give your child the attention they need. And you make sure they know when they walk in the room, they are important. They are more important than that screen that's in front of you. As you listen to me through these other podcasts and stuff, you're going to recognize that I don't mean your child should be the center of the world. I absolutely don't mean that. And you will, you will learn that later. If you, if you haven't heard me before, you will learn that that is not what I'm talking about. But it is important that your screen not be the priority when your child's in the room. I know that a lot of you have seen that. I know I have. We could do that right now. We could walk into a restaurant right now and probably see parents on their cell phones looking at their screens and their children are wiggling around in their chairs without any attention, without any conversation, being completely ignored. It really makes me sad when I see that. And I know it makes you probably sad too. I want you to recognize it and be sure that you're not one of those parents that does that. That is not giving the priority to your child. It's certainly not what's best for your child. And you all know that. Everyone knows that. Be sure that your child is a priority over the screen. Now, I want to make sure there are a few things that you understand to what I'm saying, because I, th- I think you do, but I just want to go over it and make sure. When I'm talking about sacrificing time, I'm not talking about giving up all your free time. I'm talking about putting priorities. When I'm talking about money, I'm not talking about living in a shack but I am talking about giving up luxuries that you might need to give up in order to stay home with your children. When I'm talking about relationships, I'm not talking about never having a romantic relationship in your life. I'm talking about giving up any idea of a romantic relationship unless you are married to the father of the child until your child is grown. And I would hope that you would try to mend any relationships that you have with Uh, the dad of the child, hopefully uh, even be remarried to him if that's a possibility. And also about friends. I'm not talking about giving up all your friends. I'm talking about choosing carefully your friends. And you might have to sacrifice some of the relationships with your friends if they are not the kind of examples that you would want around your children. I'm talking about sacrificing screen time when your child is in the room, but I'm not talking about sacrificing all your screen time or giving up screens. I'm talking about putting, again, your priorities in order. And so as far as sacrificing other things, there are some things that are important to sacrifice and some things that are important not to. I want to talk just for a minute about that. Um, And I'm talking about sports. I'm talking about dance recitals. I'm talking about... All of, the, all of those other extracurricular activities your child might be involved in. I think it is totally great and fine if that is something you love to do. You like to go to their games. You like to go to their plays and all that. And I think it's important that you do it. If your child is involved in one of those extracurricular activities, it's important that you go. Now, sometimes that is a sacrifice, definitely, because you don't care for it. But other times, it's something that you enjoy. So it's something that you just want to go to. But I also think that you need to be careful in making sure that whatever it is that you allow them to be involved in, in the, as far as extracurricular activities go, that it fits into your family. It fits into the life of your family. Don't overwhelm your child or yourself by overwhelming your schedule with all those activities. We will also talk about that in another podcast. There is a line, in other words, there are boundaries in the sacrifices that you make. Sometimes it isn't what's best to do too many activities because you want to sacrifice and you want your child to be involved in lots of things. Sometimes that kind of sacrifice is actually detrimental to your child and your family. So all the sacrifices you make, 
need to be those kind that are going to be most beneficial to your family in the overall picture. So I, I'll give you an example. I had a son who was involved in lots of things and he wanted to be involved in more things. He was in ROTC. He was in Scouts. He, w- he had activities at church. He had youth group. He was in choir. He was in the play. And he wanted to also be involved in some sporting activities. Well, at that point, every evening, almost every evening, was already taken up. Okay, He might have had one or two evenings a week out of seven that he didn't have an activity. And he wanted to fill those with more activities. Well, could I have sacrificed, as some people might say, and said, yes, I will go ahead and drive you to all these places. I will make sure that you get to all these places because I'm a good parent and I'm going to sacrifice. Well, in my view, that was not the kind of sacrifice that would be best for everyone. It wouldn't be best for him and it wouldn't be best for our family. So some people might think, well, you should have done it because that's what he wanted to be involved in. I don't believe that's true. The reason is because you need to put boundaries around the things that you are, I'm putting my hands up doing the little quote sign, sacrificing for. (laughs) Because sometimes those things are not what is best. You need to be willing to do what is best for them. And sometimes they're not going to be happy with the choices that you make in that arena. So he wasn't happy about me not allowing him to do the sports thing. But we would have had to cut out other things that he was already doing that I felt were very beneficial. Um, So it would have been a choice that I would have had to make. And we couldn't do everything. So sometimes the sacrifice isn't necessarily giving up more time, but is having to deal with the idea that your child might not be happy with the choices that you make. Sometimes those are the sacrifices that you make instead. So an overall picture is you sacrifice the best way for you, your child, and your family, not necessarily always giving up more time, more energy, and more effort. That isn't always the best way to sacrifice. So I'm going to end the podcast now, and the next podcast we're going to have is going to be combining the next two subjects, which are what you allow in moderation, they may do to excess, and parental maturity. We're going to put those two things together into a podcast um, so we can talk about that next time. I also wanted to let you know that after I have done the podcasts with the basics, eventually I'm going to be taking questions and then answering the questions on the podcasts. Um, I hope to eventually even do the video podcast rather than just audio. So I hope that you will um, continue to follow my podcasts here and that they are beneficial to you and that you'll share them with others. Right now, in order to ask me some questions, because I'm going to be collecting questions, I already have some that have been asked, um, you can send your questions to mommyanswerlady at outlook.com. And you can also see me on Facebook uh, at the Mommy Answer Lady and on YouTube. You can see these podcasts if you're looking at them from another site at this point. Um, So you can look me up again, the Mommy Answer Lady. If you have any questions, be sure and send them by email. Again, it is mommyanswerlady at outlook.com. And I look forward to the next podcast and be able to talk to you again. We will talk to you soon. And remember, moms, you can do this.